Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I want to talk to you about the latest version of Luminar 2018 and that is version 1.2.0 or Luminar Jupiter. This has just been released and it has a lot of new features. There's a lot of emphasis on performance and in this video I want to give you kind of a, a quick overview of a couple of the main features. So I'm not going to go into everything because it I would be here all day but there are a few key features so I'm going to talk about them. So now the first one is performance, in particular opening RAW files. Now just a kind of a quick caveat here, some of the features that I'm talking about are going to be only in the Mac version initially and they will be rolled out into the PC version as um, fairly soon I'm sure. They have added additional features for Windows in this version including uh, free transform has been added, flip and rotate has been added and more importantly batch processing has been added to the Windows version in this. But first of all I want to talk about faster raw opening. Now so just again currently this is only on the Mac version um, but they said that it will be added to the Windows version soon. To give you an example of just how much it's been improved, um, I have a file here and I'm just going to drop it onto the old version of Luminar um, just to show you how long it used to take and then by comparison I'm going to open it in the new version. So first of all this is the old version so I'm just going to drop it on here. Okay, so I'm going to talk over this because this actually, it was actually quite slow for opening raw files, um, especially Fuji X-Trans files because they always took a little bit longer. So as you can see, uh, it's still going. Um, on average, it usually takes around 20 seconds on my computer. Obviously, if you have a newer computer, um, it will be a bit faster. I'm opening this on an old Mac Pro. So there you go. It's now, the file is now open. So as you can see, that is quite slow and it's not ideal. So let me just close this and let me just quit out of this. Okay, so now I'm going to drop it on the new version. And as you can see, that's substantially faster. That opened in about four seconds. <laughs> so they say it's three times faster. In my experience, it's, that's probably about right. Um, three to four times faster easily. But it's much more usable now, um, and it's definitely better. OK, so the next big feature is they have added uh, automatic lens correction. Now, personally, this was one of the kind of things that annoyed me about the previous version was um, they did add some lens correction tools, but it wasn't automatic and it didn't take it from cameras that have metadata. And it was actually kind of, it was just kind of messy. But they've now added um, corrections for distortion, chromatic aberration and defringing, all automatic and it's based off the metadata. So if your camera includes lens corrections in metadata, it will use that. Or alternatively, it will use your metadata to find the make and model and will find an appropriate um, lens profile. It seems to work mo on most lenses I've tried, with the exception of one. Um, I have found that it, it doesn't seem to work with the Nikon 28 to 300. That's the only lens I've found that doesn't work so far, which, curiously enough, on one software doesn't work with that either. But anyway, if I turn this, this is a uh, Fuji X Pro 2 file taken with the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Um, so I'm just going to turn all these on here. The, you, you're not seeing a, a massive change there because there's not that much distortion on this anyway, but you can see that it's definitely changed. Um, and this is great because this is one of the key features that was missing from this. Um, and there you have it. <laughs> okay, so to give you a better idea, let me just pick a different image just so you can see what's going on. So I have another file here, which this was shot with my little Canon G7X. And the reason I want to show you this one is because the lens distortion on that camera is quite bad and it relies on software for a fix. So this was almost unusable in the previous version. As you can see, the distortion is extremely bad. <laughs> so if I click over here to lens and click on lens distortion, and there you go, instantly fixed. So this is the kind of thing that we've you kind of take for granted in most other applications. So it's good to see Luminarch finally getting this and with the added speed now, I think this is kind of one of the key features that has been holding this, the software back a little bit for using it for with RAW files. Um, and I think this makes a dramatic difference. And that leads me to the next big feature, as it now supports uh, DCP color profiles. So if you have other software installed, you may already have DCP profiles. Some of the profiles with Lightroom and Photoshop use DCP profiles. So if that is the case, they will show up here. So for example, this was shot with my Canon. 
And if I look in here and I see external profiles and you can see all the cameras ones, so camera standard. So we've got camera neutral. I think it was already on standard. Uh, monochrome. And then Adobe standard. And then if I go back to camera standard. So again, it varies from camera to camera. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, and I know this is probably going to upset a few people, uh, it doesn't seem to find any Fuji profiles, and that's because I think the Fuji profiles are ICC profiles rather than DCP profiles, which I know is a kind of a technical thing, but um, the profiles with Lightroom don't seem to work with this. Now, I've done a search and I can't really find any uh, DCP profiles and that match the Fuji film simulation modes, but I'm sure they're out there. Uh, like DCP profiles have been around for a while, so um, I would imagine somebody somewhere has created them. And if not, with the advent of this, I'd say it's only gonna be a matter of time and it's not gonna be very long. So I'd say that's something that will be added in the near future. Um, but again, let me just give you another example. So this is uh, another file taken with the G7X. So again, I'm just gonna drop it on Luminar here. And again, as you can see, this is a raw file. It's a 20 megapixel raw file and that loaded in a couple of seconds. So it's much better than it was. So again, I can just go in here and select camera standard. And that to me matches the colors that I would expect from this. Um, so that's very similar to what I would get from the JPEGs. And again, if you have other profiles, you can use them as well. Um, so if you have, for example, the VSCO film, um, presets for Lightroom. They use the DCP profile, so you can use any of the color profiles that come with that. So yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's, it should be noted too that this is, this is completely separate from the LUT mapping, so you can still use a LUT mapping on top of this. So uh, just to do this quickly, um, I'm going to use a preset here because I have a LUT mapping built into it already. And that's kind of got a bit weird, but so that's kind of doing odd things there. So let me just turn this off. Ah, that's why. Uh, yeah, you may find that if you had some older profiles, things go a bit funky, uh, or some older presets. So um, that could be an issue if you're upgrading. Um, again, I'm using a beta version of this, so these things may not be in the final version. But all I had to do there was reset that, uh, and now it's fine. So there you can see that's using a lot map and a profile. Okay, so that's kind of the main features. Um, there's a lot of uh, little small things. They Overall, they claim the speed has been improved significantly and just from kind of using it, it does feel that way, all right. On Windows, they've added a bunch of stuff to bring it up to speed, although again, as I said, it's not everything is there yet. Um, but there's definitely a dramatic improvement in speed, and especially in terms of opening RAW files. And the addition of the automatic lens corrections makes a big deal as well. Uh, I think that that is probably the biggest new feature of this and that will make this much more usable as a raw uh, image processor. Previously, I'd kind of been avoiding it for raw files. I've mostly been using it as a plugin for f uh, Lightroom because of that. I mean, you could, it was working fine. You just had to manually do all the corrections, but this, this is much, much better. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. Um, as I said, there's lots of other features in it and I'll be exploring a bit more in the near future. But for now, I just wanted to give you a quick first look at the new version, which is released. It should be out now at the time uh, you get to see this. So uh, thanks again for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks again. See you next time.